So we took them from doing around 5k a month and scaling up to around 100k a month and we did this around in a period of around 25 to 30 days or so uh, and in this video I'm really going to give you everything that you need to know to get you there and much more. Okay, so I'm really going to give you the ad strategy that we use, the scaling strategy as well as the expensive mistakes that uh, we definitely made uh, throughout the process, right? And things that definitely can, can be avoided. When we were scaling the, the campaigns at first, like we were really on pace to do around uh, 330k a month or so, like purely based on Shopify, right? And then several things happened, which I think uh, we can learn from, right? Also how to scale and actually produce increasing returns so your business actually ages like fine wine, it gets better over time. Right, so if you're running any sort of uh, e-commerce, for example, uh, Shopify, Magento, WooCommerce, or info product businesses, or a high-ticket service-based agency, right? This is this. I really think this video is going to be useful for you. Right, is using the same principles as well. Okay, if you're not outputting at least two million dollars a year in sales, right, then this will get you there like on hygiene standard. Okay. If you want to be doing, however, like uh, mid uh, to high seven figures per year, then you definitely need additional systems in place. Uh, but that's a story for another another day. Okay, so just follow me into the ads manager. I will dive in and then uh, a few PowerPoints and slides and, uh, and stuff. And then I'll just uh, break down uh, how to structure your campaigns and uh, basically the back end of it. Okay, yeah. So I'm in my uh, Shopify desk dashboard right now. So I'm just going to refresh the page one time. Uh, right, so uh, in case anybody says anything, it's like it's not fake, okay? So just gonna refresh the page one time. Uh, okay, so you can clearly see, okay, so let me just stretch back, okay? So from like, I think September 1st, September 1st to September 30th, uh, yeah, they did like uh, 5k a month, and then in the next, uh, like October 1st, right? So you stretch to November 2nd, right? Then you got that 100k month right there. Right, so uh, the thing is, we our conversion rate sucks actually. Like it's really, really bad. So I feel really good because it's, there's like a lot of room for improvement, right? So if you actually extend it back all the way to I think August first, to today is December six, yeah, right. So in total two hundred forty five k. But uh, I I think our span was like uh, not counting the previous sales, right? So we started uh, October first, so that's. So around to around 230k in sales, right? So uh, let me just explain to you what the graph, what's happening, right? So like here we are like scaling up, and then we like really really healthily scaling up, and then at this point, literally at the peak, right? Uh, my client was like, "Hey, we're running out of stock," and I was like, "Oh shit, that's not good." And uh, yeah, so <laughs> we're running out of stock then, and then so basically you can see here everything's inconsistent afterwards because I was like, "Okay, let's just try to clear stock, let's just try to uh, get the conversions and just clear the stock inventory, right?" And then uh, afterwards, uh, this is like close close to Black Friday already. So uh, and then so basically we build out our email list, build out our asset list, and as well as like our no no notifications list, right? So uh, the assets were were like on fire, like the the creatives were on fire, and the assets were building up very very aggressively at the, at the same time. Okay, and then um, at this point, just ran out of stock completely. Okay, and then so I was like, okay, that's not good. Then uh, my client was like, okay, since it's Black Friday and Christmas, right? How about we do credit sales, right? So we accept money before we actually deliver the product, and the, the product will be delivered only after Christmas, right? And so I mean, okay, I mean, just try, it, right? Why not, right? So and then so when we open the floodgates and stuff, and then just did like really simple email marketing and stuff. We didn't even touch email marketing at all, right? Then we we were like getting uh, like uh, these type of numbers on Black Friday and stuff. Okay, so uh, as you can see, right, brand equity, brand awareness, like means something, right? People really actually remember you, and the amount of traffic that's driving through the site is uh, really, really insane, uh. Yeah. So uh, although we can't, we can't really scale. Like, you can see very, very nice, consistent graphs and stuff, which is actually what I wanted. But I mean, we have inventory issues, and that's the the issues that I was talking to you about, and I'm gonna show you uh, afterwards as well, like uh, the mistakes. Okay. So I mean, in analytic analytics, right? For example, uh, the first uh, like October first, uh, October thirty first, right? Um. Yeah, you can clearly see like uh the conversion rate is really really bad. It's really really bad. I would like to say that. Yeah. So it's like there's really really a lot of things that can be improved and uh, which I I feel good about. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So this Shopify. Let me just show you uh, Ads Manager itself. So okay, this is December thirty first. Okay. So if we stretch back the same, uh October first, right? And then December, December six. Yeah. So update. So I mean total ad spend. Let me check. Um, total ad spend around fifty five k. So fifty five k, and then I remember it was like two hundred thirty k, right? So around around a four times four times plus ROAS. 
over yeah to 230 so around four four plus row s right there okay yep so uh okay on the left hand side here i will put a black box because it's like private information and stuff but you can see row s right row s numbers like um the thing about media buying and stuff in general it's not consistent right it's other than a science so if you see numbers like this like it's quite decent but uh, for every ad account, is different. So what I realized about this ad account, and definitely you definitely need a skilled media buyer, someone who really knows and understands ads, if, if you're actually running ads yourself, right? Is that this account, the behavior, needs actually a plus 0 0.9 to plus 1.5 ROAS. So this 3.13 is actually like a 4, in, in actual fact, right? That's why we are able to scale uh, very, very consistently and like very, very confidently as well, right? So even though like uh, there's a 1.83 here, this is actually uh, uh, more than break even. Right, break even. I think it's around uh, 1.6. But then again, this is a plus 0 0.9 to 1.5. So, uh, in that sense, we are very, very comfortable scaling this, this type of campaigns as well. Okay. Uh, let me see what I can see. Uh, show you without actually showing you on the left hand side, right? So, I mean, this is a combination of like uh, retargeting, uh, look like audiences, uh, custom audiences, uh, and then manual bits as well. So you can see like uh, per day, we're spending around 500, 300 uh, campaigns per day. But then there is also different strategies such as uh, manual bits. So yeah, you can see this one, right? This is a manual bit campaign right here. And it spent like a thousand dollars per day, that kind of thing, right? So you definitely need to test things up. And then when you go to the higher levels and stuff, then you can try, uh, try multiple different things, okay? With that said, this is all uh, ads. This is all ads. You must uh, really, really hone in on your product page, your copywriting, understanding who your customer is as well. That is as equally as important. I would say even more important than the actual technical side of media buying. Uh, but yep, that's a story for another day. Okay. Uh, what I like to say is really, like deep down inside, only you really know how well your business is doing. Right? I, I can't say anything because uh, I'm not in a position. But my aim for this video is really for you to uh, gain any sort of value so that you can seriously just incrementally increase your business in any way, increase the conversion rate by the slightest and I will be happy. I will have done my job, okay? So if you spend time watching uh, this video with me, right, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to make sure you take away some advice that you can uh, take and implement right away, okay? So let me just go right into my PowerPoint right here. It's not going to be boring, okay? So as I said before, uh, who is this for, right? Who is this video for? It's like um, anybody who's running e-commerce info product, high ticket service-based business. So high ticket uh, agency style of business, right? Uh, be it, if, even if you're in finance, you need, you need clients, right? Uh, consultants, uh, design agencies, any type of consulting would do. As long as you can charge them high ticket, right? It'll be fine, okay? And uh, how I'm going to structure this video is I'm first going to break down the, the exact funnel uh, that's being used on this e-commerce store, right? And I'm going to show you the ad strategy, structuring your campaigns, and then afterwards, last of all, uh, the expensive lessons that you should definitely avoid, okay? So let me just go into funnel analytics right here and show you... Uh, the funnel breakdown. Okay, so it's actually really, very, very, very simple. Very, very simple. And the more simple it is, the better. Because you're trying to reduce the friction uh, to the purchase as much as possible. So uh, you can see here, right? It's really literally one traffic source doing this. One traffic source, right? On Instagram, people run their entire businesses on one, one traffic source. Okay, so there's Instagram and Facebook coming in, uh, running through the product page, and then it goes to the cart page, and then it goes to the checkout. On the checkout, we normally do uh, four to six uh, email sequence abandoned cart. Right? And then it comes back to the checkout and then it goes to the thank you page and then it upsells them uh, a similar product, okay? So that's how you increase your average order value, right? So if you're actually profitable on the front end, this is what you can see, right? But if you add in email marketing as well, you definitely will like really go on steroids, okay? So uh, I would really suggest you if your business is not doing well or like if you're struggling at this point in time, right? Go find that one traffic source first, okay? You try and scale on cold traffic, then you diversify. Because what people are trying to do is that, hey, okay, I'm getting really good ROAS on my warm traffic, but anybody can do that, right? Really anybody can do that. I can watch a YouTube video and I can do it as well, right? But what you is very, very challenging is actually being able to be profitable on cold traffic and people don't understand that, right? To be able to um, grow your business, you need a consistent and predictable way to convince people who do not know you to buy a product, right? That's, that's how you scale a business, right? So if you're able to scale cold and profitable, right? Your advertising will be 100% always positive ROI all the time, right? So always keep in mind, right? It's not a traffic problem. There's so much traffic in the world. Like Google and Facebook own basically everything, right? It's a conversion, it's a conversion problem. But once you solve this conversion problem, you are basically, uh, you're set, you're set for life really. Uh, you have mar market resonance in no time. And especially when you use my techniques to scale, uh, then you actually achieve that very, very fast, okay? Um, for mature companies or like if you've already solved this right you've already solved the main conversion funnel where your customers are then you can you can continuously improve your average order value and get to that high uh, seven figure mark 
through this. Okay, so that one will probably get you around the two to four million, uh, no problem. And then this will, for mature companies trying to scale up even more, you definitely need to uh, plug holes in the leaky funnel. Okay, so especially if you're like transitioning to a private equity buyout or you want to build, uh, you need to build assets, right? If you want to transition to an exit in the future, right? So you need to think about uh, how do we build up our email list? How do we maintain that lifetime value and have retention of a customer, right? Having a person continuously purchase from you so that you don't have to continuously go out to cold traffic all the time, right? Then then you are extremely, extremely profitable at the same time, okay? So uh, I'm just going to say, right? Email is going to be the most profitable channel in the future when you are a mature company, right? but conversion is the problem that everybody cannot solve in the first place so think of it i always see the analogy where paid traffic uh right these, these are ads paid traffic right is the train yeah email is the rails right yeah, but the, the the thing is that it's the backbone right but you still need the train and the train will get you there first you know so uh, that, that's kind of how i see it and as you can see here right there's a lot a lot a lot of tools uh messenger affiliate programs search uh seo right banner adwords uh full-fledged email marketing uh, sequences uh, campaigns and stuff right so these all are all literally very very complicated in itself but i'm not going to touch it i'm just going to say uh if you want to get and uh get to a very very efficient and profitable state then uh, you definitely need to get to these things okay uh, definitely need the powerpoint okay so that is the final breakdown okay next one would be uh, ad strategy as well as structuring your campaigns. Okay, so uh, let me go back into Chrome as well. And then, so basically, I'm gonna give you all the, all of my documents, really. I'm seriously gonna give you everything, okay? So you don't have to worry about it. So uh, once you come into this Facebook group here, right? right, You can just uh, search com Growth Secrets. I, I, this was just what I put it, OXG Media on Facebook, right? And then you come in on the left-hand side uh, on the units section. And then in unit one, I've put in all of the, the links uh, for everything that you need to know. So uh, Facebook ad strategy, I put it here and then your ROAS calculator will put it here. So let me just show you uh, what we create or what we use internally at our agency, right? So you can see this is our strategy. Let me just go through the slides, okay? So very, very simple. Facebook ad strategy, uh, this will change over time, right? As we continuously try to improve our processes and systems as well, then we want to improve our, our ad strategies as well, okay? So uh, this is the contents on the page, okay? These are like tenets to stick to. What, what this really means is that, like as media buying, right? It's a creative as well as science. So, so science is art plus art, right? And uh, these are the type of men the mentality that you need to be in, especially when you're testing things in the marketplace, right? Uh, you need to let the data data decide, okay? So we always say that you ne never, you're never better than the market. So let always let the market, let the data decide, okay? So preventing ad fatigue, right? If you want to test creative and copy at the same time, and you need to mix and match. So for example, I have four videos right here. For example, if I produce four videos and I have four pieces of copy, Right, so I have how many permutations and computations right here, and so so on and so forth, and you can mix and match, and you basically unlimited variations. Right, what your competitors are doing is that they have one creative, one video, and that's all they have. Right, you're gonna have this, and you're gonna be producing content on the regular. So you are never gonna be in the ad fatigue stage, and you're always gonna outbeat your competitor no matter what. Okay, okay, so if this like general rules that we use but if the cpms are getting too high because uh facebook advertising is getting really really expensive and competitive at the same time it's not that it's uh, uh impossible it's just really expensive right uh, right if it's 30 dollars or uh then or the conversion ranking is like below average or worse right generally then you want to set up a new creative right that's the, the indication to you that facebook is telling you that the marketplace is not liking your creative and not liking your product okay so you definitely need, need to do something about that okay Yep. Okay. So note. So these are like general rules that we always put in place, such as uh, for cold traffic, never use photo ads. That is that's our thing, right? Uh, we, I, uh, I personally think we are really good at uh, highly converting video ads. That's why we are successful, right? And so we use, never use photo ads, and those don't get results straight up. Okay. Uh, do not mix audiences, right? These are technical things. You can just read uh, when you come into this document. Must turn on automated rules. So I uh, will talk about risk management later as well. Okay, and then uh, what we always do is like our audience size is always more than 1 million as well. Okay, so what we do is structure it, uh, what we call it in my agency is like uh, like three levels. So we do level one, two, and three. Level one is just testing. So in the second phase, right, you don't know what, what is happening. You really don't know. Even I don't know what's happening, right? We always let the, the data decide. And so when you put out uh, your creatives, uh, right, 
you can follow this. This is a blueprint. I'm just gonna give it to you seriously, right? Uh, but because execution is everything at, at the end at the end of the day, right? So you can see here we test around like more than seven ad sets at one time, multiple creatives all the time, and we're consistently rotating these creatives, right? So uh, this is a rolling campaign. What this means is that this campaign is never off. We are never turning this off because this is the experiment factor. This is uh how we. I guess uh, we'll outbid everyone in the marketplace because we test more. We just test more. We experiment with more so we know what works and what, what doesn't work. Okay, so uh, these are like several automated rules that, I mean, definitely you can use this. Uh, uh, you can just replicate what I have, but you also can use it and just adapt it to your business and then uh, you can uh, achieve similar results. Okay, so all about risk management, right? Generally, if you want to break even row S, for example, like within a 1.2 to 1.8, and how I see it is like, uh, as long as I'm hitting two times on coal, right? The, the retargeting uh, one bucket funnel, uh, sorry, one, one bucket traffic, warm traffic bucket, right? You're set to scale, right? That, that's generally the KPIs that we are using. Okay, on the le level two, you can see you want to ride the wave, go ride the wave, right? Because uh, level one, you've done the hard work. That is literally the hardest part. And if you're able to scale profitably on level one, level two is uh, quite easy. Okay, so level two, uh, what you want to do is uh, take all of the, the winning assets, winning, uh, yeah, winning assets, winning creatives, right? Bring it into a CBO campaign, right? CBO campaign is ca campaign budget optimization. And then uh, in this CBO campaign, then you can just uh, scale anywhere from $300 per day per campaign to $3,000 per day. If the ROAS holds, then you continue, okay? Only if the ROAS holds. That, that is one thing you definitely need to uh, look out for. Because if they don't hold, right? It just means that on high budgets, uh, your creatives is not going to work, okay? So uh, that's another thing that you definitely have to look into as well. Okay. Uh, okay. So level two here, similarly, uh, these are similar rules, so you can go check it out. Okay. And level three is basically going on steroids. So, so you have really validated uh, the creative, validated the ad copy and stuff. And so what level three is really doing is just trying to scale to the moon. It's just trying to kill your competitors, right? So um, right here, uh, okay, it's all, all put in here. But basically what you do is take one ad interest and then you basically uh, duplicate the same ad set and then you duplicate that like uh, five to 11 times. You get, I put seven here because we are, we are I would say we are insane. Uh, we are like really aggressive. But uh, just put like five to 11 times. You just uh, duplicate the same ad set and then you just put that on a five times CPA. So the campaign budget would be, I put it here, campaign budget would be like five times the CPA, right? And then afterwards you can just monitor from there. Okay, so automate the rules. Uh, this is just generally what we do. You can definitely uh, just see it and check it out. Uh, and then you obviously adapt it to your business as well, right? Uh, custom audience and library and segmentation. Okay, so you can see here, how we do it is like, uh, this is retargeting, right? So we definitely need to know what is happening um, and what are we actually targeting. So uh, when you're retargeting, you definitely need to change copy. That's one thing that you need to uh, watch out for. Okay, so there's top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. And this is your LTV retention. Okay, audience, right? So as you can see here, there's cold traffic, and then these are the types of things, and then the types of creatives that we use as well. That uh, I think you can just share as copy as right. Uh, there's warm traffic, right? Middle of funnel. So there are several custom audiences, and I think Facebook uh, is developing on more custom audiences on the warm traffic side as well. So I think you can be really excited to add more here as well in the future. Okay, and then uh, this one, second last slide is the warm traffic. So bottom of funnel. So these are people who are uh, definitely going to buy. Right, and I think the last one, yes. Okay, so this is lifetime value maximization. So people who have purchased before, very, very different, but a different type of copy as well. Okay, so that's about it for the ad strategy wise. Okay, let me go back to the PowerPoint. Just give me one second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so um, when I talk about this, right, and like ad strategies in general, like it's very technical, but it's also keep in mind your creative is very, very important, right? Your creative is really the make or break. It doesn't matter how good the media buying is. If both of, of those two things don't work out together, you're not going to be successful. Like it's, it's, uh, it's a given, okay? So uh, once, but however, right? However, if you are actually successful in your cold traffic scaling, you are set. You are really going to, to, to dominate and just up it and kill everybody, right? So what's going to happen is that uh, you are slowly like you know when I said um, your businesses uh, your business ages like fine wine right it will generally go into a certain point right where you are thinking oh no the ROAS is not too good to a certain point and then afterwards you will hit market resonance so market resonance is uh, the point where you will outbid all your competitors they have no right at all to be in the space at all your your customers won't even see your competitors ads anymore and that is the point when your the value of the brand will increase exponentially you will see sales just flood in 
okay uh like even for, for for this case study right we have not even gotten to market resonance at that point because if you're spending like uh 2k a day right that, that's not even market resonance if you're spending like five five to, uh five to ten k per day right then you know you really know you can just dominate the market inside out okay so uh yep this is this is really what you definitely see as well as the conversion value go like tremendously up Okay, so that is it for ad strategy. Just remember just to see the Facebook group and it's in the units section. Okay, the last part of my presentation is uh, about the expensive lessons. I think everyone, uh, people always talk about success, but I think it's all about failure as well, right? And if you learn from your failures, then it, it's even more valuable than, than anything, right? Okay, so these this this expensive lessons, I would say like, like seriously, right? we didn't even get to scale on Black Friday. They even get to scale on Christmas during the Christmas period, right? So I'm pretty sure you missed out like on uh, perhaps like 400k in sales right now. And then I mean, uh, it's really sad, uh, but I mean, these are mistakes that we should learn, right? So uh, number one, number one is definitely get your inventory and fulfillment sorted. So uh, this is only applicable if you're running a physical product uh, e-commerce, right? So if you're actually going to Q4, then please expect to order uh, the quantity of product, right? Times three, times four for Q4, right? When, uh, when I was telling my client, right? Hey, we're going to scale. He didn't really fathom the 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 possibility of scaling of already going into like 100k a month that kind of thing they kind of scale so because like if you're consistently just doing two 3k a month you won't expect that type of numbers to come in and you won't be prepared right so if you're actually working with you right then uh we actually want to scale we actually want to get you like a minimum just three 400k a month like, like minimum right so uh when you're getting ready to scale then you definitely need your fulfillment being solid as well as your foundations right if you scale and you cannot fulfill this fulfillment right uh, it affects your Facebook page score and the page score actually affects your entire ad performance, right? So everything is correlated. You need to be providing uh, the best customer experience uh, to your customer as possible, okay? Like you must really, really like, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think that's, uh, yeah, okay. So no such thing as decreasing ad spend, okay? So once you're there, right? Once you're ready, uh, cold traffic, right? And if you cannot do fulfillment, like try to get that, uh, try to get fulfillment sorted ASAP because once you're trying to decrease ad spend, you're going to see everything cut as well. Okay, this exponential return thing is 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 uh, only doing when you start increasing ad spend. But if you're decreasing ad spend, right, the performance won't be same as your past campaigns. I don't know why, but Facebook just works like this. Okay, um, okay. Then, as I said before, Facebook is very fragile. So if you're spending upwards of like two k a day on traffic, right, Facebook is like glass. Yeah, it's unlike Google. I'm not sure why, but Facebook is fragile, and you cannot just touch it. Like the you cannot just optimize or change things immediately. Right, so uh, if the ads can't change, if the marketing and advertising can't change, then you definitely need to, to back up on the fulfillment side, okay? But if you're running info product or software, or SaaS, right, then that, this is not a problem. But if you're running a high ticket service, then your sales reps, you definitely need to hire more sales reps or something to, to close your the, the potential leads that are coming in to book into your calendar, okay? Second one would be possible channel. Okay, so in the month of November, right, uh, my client told me like, uh, cause we're doing like two channels, right? Shopify and Amazon, right? So there's like 310K uh, in November over two point of sale channels, right? So you must really keep in mind, if you want to do this, right? It is possible. There'll be an insane amount of organic and referral traffic coming from Facebook because your entire brand will lift up. People will see your, your brand on Facebook and search it on Google and perhaps they'll buy on Amazon because Prime, Prime, Amazon Prime is really very powerful, right? That, that, that sort of a uh, uh, one-day shipping sort of thing, right? However, in, in the long run, right, I would really suggest you, if you want to, to go the Amazon route, that when your brand matures, then you want to steer clear for an Amazon because uh, they have tighter profit margins and you're not building an asset, right? Um, Amazon has a history of cannibalizing other people's brands and products if they are selling well on the platform because they control the data. So you definitely want to control your point of sale and control the channel as well. Okay, the third thing, this is really the biggest factor that we have has affected uh, everything. Okay, um, I'll say it's really annoying, but I mean, uh, this, these, these, these things can be avoided, okay? So when we were scaling the ad spend, it stopped entirely and it absolutely just destroyed the ad performance. The All of all of the amount of work that we did to scale the campaigns uh, from the get-go, okay? So the solution to this is that you would please just get a backup credit card or something uh, that, that will definitely stop, that will prevent the stopping of the ads. And then uh, we also realized that like uh, using Amex, right? Amex has a consistent problem of, of uh, not allowing to charge the card which is like dangerous, right? I mean, it's your business. So like, uh, I'm not sure why it's, it's uh, our experience with Amex, okay? Um, okay, so IP lawyer. So during this time, it's very interesting as well. So it's another issue that we, we ran into 
was that once we were scaling and uh, about to reach market resonance, right, then other people were trying to sell our product as well. And it was very funny because they were trying to buy our ad space, but obviously they're not going to win. I mean, we are spending uh, a ton, right? We're just outbidding everybody. And uh, so like in the process as well, we had to like, send uh, C's and this C's letters. So I, I mean, I, I didn't even know this was a thing, but uh, yeah, apparently people copy and just, uh, if you want, just prepare this just in case, right? There are a lot of copycats in the space. Okay. The last one would be your funnel doesn't convert or it's a leaky funnel. So if you've been running tons of traffic through a funnel or a product page just doesn't work right, just stop all the traffic immediately and redo the funnel, redo the product page. Because um, how we see it is like, if you're doing the same thing over and over again and you're expecting a different result, this is insanity, right? So if the actual product itself does not convert, it's not the marketing, right? Just change the value proposition or something, change the copywriting, uh, change the, the entire product page, change the funnel. Right, you need to be changing something. You can't be throwing money at the wall and expect things to be uh, working fine, right? So, um, this is something that definitely you should look into um, if that is the if that that is what you want. Okay, so uh, to efficiently scale, uh, let me just reiterate. Okay, so get your fulfillment and uh, inventory sorted. Number two, a possible channel is an Amazon. Number three, uh, be wary of uh, credit card issues. Number four. Uh, IP lawyer number five uh, change your funnel if it doesn't convert okay I've come to the end of my presentation and uh, I like I thank you for spending the time with me uh, if you'd like to connect with me right or work with me uh, my my site my agency site is oxg-media.com and if you want to follow me on Instagram yep uh, it's at j-o-n-p-m-p yep okay I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching the video I hope it was informative okay so I guess the last uh, the final note that I have for you is that um, like this is all knowledge with real money, real ad spend being put behind the results. And like we experiment, experiment a lot, a lot of things, right? So please definitely use this knowledge. If you need, just rewind this video and stuff, right? And use this knowledge to actually implement your business some way, right? Uh, absorb the knowledge, implement it and execute in some way so that you can incrementally increase your business in some sense. Okay. Uh, yep. Last of all, wishing you and your family a uh, happy holiday and yep. See you soon.